So good morning everyone, my name is Sabrina and I'm delighted to present this contribution titled Unlocking the Power of Emotions of Immersive Literature. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I'm currently pursuing my PhD in psychology at Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore in Milan. My research is focused on understanding how technologies such as virtual reality and metaverse can sustain humans' positive experiences, mainly in the field of education and training. I am working alongside Dr. Marta Pizzolante, Professor Alice Chirico, and my academic tutor, Professor Andrea Gaggioli. The goal of the present contribution is to elicit an insightful conversation and discussion centered on these main themes. Can literature be effectively accessed using new media technologies such as virtual reality? What specific attributes of virtual reality contribute most significantly to a positive engagement with literary works? To what extent immersive literature enhance and shape the human reading experience in terms of emotions? Technology advancements have always had an impact on the evolution of literature, posing either potential threats or appealing promises. They served as a catalyst for cultural changes and the development of new narrative and structures and forms. For example, the advent of the printing press during the Renaissance, an innovation that transformed the dissemination of knowledge and stories. Or again, the rise of the internet and digital platforms that has introduced entirely new narrative forms and tools, such as web novels, interactive storytelling apps and ebooks. In this slide, you can see some examples of applications that have been recently developed for reading with the augmented reality, extended reality, or virtual reality tools. At the end of the presentation, you can find the references in the cytography uh, place. We can say that with the advent of immersive technologies, it has been inaugurated a new era of technology-literature relation. Several definitions of virtual reality exist, with the predominant inter interpretation characterizing VR as a computer-generated emulation of a three-dimensional image or space that can be accessed through diverse technologies, such as computers or head-mounted displays. Given that nowadays it is possible to deliver not only computer-generated visual stimuli, but also olfactory, haptic, and auditory stimuli, we can say that it is possible to stimulate all the exterceptive senses, thus allowing to create an external virtual environment able to create a multisensory illusion of being in another place. In both the psychological and literary investigations, the primary focus has centered around the two distinct features of VR, namely immersion and presence. Here we will focus only on immersion. However, in the illustration on the right, you can find additional virtual reality attributes that has received comparatively less attention or remain unexplored. We can psychologically define immersion as a user interaction with a virtual reality system that results in a flow state. In psychological research, the main focus has been on sensory spatial immersion, defined as the degree to which the range of sensory channels are engaged by the virtual simulation. However, in literary theory, um, immersion is used to refer both to a system property and also to a subjective reaction to the narrative content. We have all had the experience of being immersed in a fictional universe when reading a book. This means that the sense of immersion does not belong only to the realm of technology, but rather it results from our own mental abilities to create a representation of the contents. We have therefore to distinguish between two subsets of immersion definition when talking about media technology and literature. On the one hand, spatial immersion, which refers to a form of immersion that is brought about and sustained by spatial attributes of the virtual environment. On the other hand, emotional immersion, that pertains to an immersive experience in which users are emotionally connected by the narrative content and emotionally connected possibly also to characters or the author of the story. Interestingly, it has been found that emotional immersion is significantly more immersive than spatial immersion in terms of sense of being there, time perception, realism, sense of engagement and other emotional aspects. 
The synergy between immersive literature and immersive virtual reality lies in their shared ability to elicit emotions. The interactive and sensory rich environment of immersive virtual reality can amplify the emotional immersion that is already inherent in literature, creating an optimal tool for exploring the depths of narrative engagement and reader emotions. Indeed, VR has been described as an optimal empathetic machine, since it allows to simulate scenarios that can provoke diverse emotional reactions. Empathy has been described as an important feature in all aesthetic experiences, and while this has been a matter of investigation for visual arts, it remains unexplored in immersive literature. It is it has been also found that immersive virtual reality holds great potential to possibly sustain and foster transformative experiences. Additionally, previous studies have corroborated immersive virtual reality efficacy as an effective medium, and especially the work by Riva and colleagues um, found an, an, a symbiotic relationship between sense of presence and emotions. Specifically, they found that engagement with the emotional activating and deactivating contents within virtual settings are able to generate states of anxiety and relaxation, respectively. The results revealed a circular connection between sense of presence and emotions. On the one hand, the sensation of presence was larger in emotional surroundings. On the other hand, the amount of sense of presence influenced the emotional state. Immersive virtual reality also has the potential of inducing a state of flow and narrative ab absorption. In the realm of uh, immersive journalism, the emotional affordances provided by immersive virtual reality have already been proven to um, effectively engage readers with specific themes and to let users switch from cool observer to emotional participant. In the literary sphere, a parallel can be drawn if the goal is to offer users not only an alternative of consuming books and text, but rather to create a new kind of experiences. By, by integrating immersive virtual reality into the literary realm, readers can delve into narratives as active participants rather than passive spectators. Characters and settings can come to life in three-dimensional spaces, and readers can explore, interact, and engage with the storyline on a deeper emotional level. But how can we create uh, this kind of immersive literature? In this sense, uh, the synergy between uh, the affordances provided by immersive virtual reality and generative artificial intelligence can open doors uh, to more personalized and new, and new unique literary experiences. More specifically, by employing artificial intelligence algorithms, narrative can adapt and evolve based on reader preferences and interactions. So now we will see uh, some scenarios that have been developed for this contribution. Possible future scenarios in which the synergy between immersive virtual reality and uh, generative artificial intelligence can be seen in immersive literature are for example, immersive reading environments. Virtual reality could create immersive reading environments in which readers can physically, but also phenomenologically, step into the words of their favorite books. Instead of simply reading about a place, readers can walk through it, interact with inhabitants, and explore every detail. Virtual worlds can be either static or dynamic, therefore showing single scenes or a sequences of scenes. On the right, you can see the second scenario, interactive narratives. Immersive virtual reality could enable interactive narratives where readers become active participants in the story. They might engage in conversations with the characters, with the virtual representation or the avatar of the author of the book, or even other readers, if we think about the affordances provided by the metaverse technology. For example, imagine reading the Divine Comedy alongside the avatar of Dante Alighieri and having the possibility to posing him questions when something is unclear. Third scenario are personalization of uh, the immersive literature content. Um, we can firstly focus on visual format. So it is possible to create diverse visual formats 
What if, for example, I want to experience the immersive literature of divine comedy with different aesthetics, for example, the, um, with, the, with the manga aesthetics? What about diverse storytelling formats? Virtuality could inspire new forms of storytelling that take advantage of its unique abilities. For example, it could be possible to create short stories designed to be experienced in a single VR session, or serialized narratives that evolve over time. Also, with personalization, it could be possible to create diverse reading settings. For example, what if I want to see my favorite scene from a book without having the book in front of me, just for a few minutes of contemplation? Here on the left, you can see the same image created with the, uh, an artificial intelligence algorithm uh, for image uh, creation, uh, in which uh, I added the, the book and I eliminated the, the element of the book. And also with personalization, it could be possible to create a diverse usability settings. For example, what if one, uh, one user prefers to be immersed in a scene that is more blurred, so less sharp? How does the sharpness influence my imagination? Or again, the fourth scenario, visualizing abstract concept. For example, complex or abstract concepts that are difficult to convey through traditional text could be visualized and experienced more directly in virtual reality. Um, let's imagine this case um, that could be particularly beneficial for, for um, science fiction book where authors often describe futuristic technologies and landscapes, or, for example, space-time travels. The fifth scenario is memories and autobiographies. There are two ways in which uh, this scenario can work. On the one hand, memories of the author of the book, or the main character, could be presented to allow readers experience significant events from the author's life or the character's life, as if they were possibly forging a stronger connection with the author's and the character's experiences. On the other hand, it could be possible to merge the reader's personal memories in the virtual scenes by, for example, adding some photos or videos in the application and letting the generative artificial intelligence algorithm creating a merge between personal memories and book stories. For example, on the right, um, I added uh, a personal photo I made uh, this summer and um, the example provided uh, is uh, imagine I would like to be immersed in uh, the book uh, The Journey at the Center of the Earth, uh, looking at scenarios that I have seen in my life. So I added uh, this photo that you can see on the left um, in a software and I asked to create uh, a similar representation but more science fiction. And so the, on the right, you can see the image that has been produced. The sixth and the last scenario, multisensory stimulation. Virtual reality can engage multiple senses, enhancing the emotional impact of a story. Readers might feel the wind of their skin, the smell of the surroundings, and hear the story's environmental sounds. The multisensory approach could create a deeper connection between the reader and the narrative. Here, imagine if I, um, if I want to visualize uh, um, a particular emotional uh, um, scene from uh, the All the Right Places book. Um, in this sense, uh, this is uh, the part of the book that I, that I took and that I added to the algorithm in order to, cre to create uh, an image that could represent uh, this uh, scene. Imagine now to experience this uh, with uh, the olfactory stimulation of flowers. So several research questions may emerge from uh, these uh, scenarios, but we will uh, focus only on uh, two research questions related to the first scenario, so the immersive reading environment. Um, first the research question, how does the level of immersion in a virtual environment influence readers' emotional engagement with the narrative and the aesthetic emotions? Secondly, are there differences in the levels of emotional engagement with the narrative and aesthetic emotions between readers who experience static versus dynamic virtual contents?
Now I will present a possible research design to answer these research questions. So we have to select the number of participants that will be recruited, for example, by running the G-Power analysis, um, mainly with diverse reading background, mix of ages, genders, and with different technological literacy, and also reading preferences. The experimental conditions might be three, I immersion virtual reality dynamic uh, scenario. So participants can experience the, a dynamic virtual world where they can enter dynamic scenes, uh, something similar to videos, uh, um, more cinematographic, we can say, um, and explore the environment freely. In the second condition, moderate immersion virtual reality, so static condition, Participants can enter static virtual environments, for example, 360 degrees images representing the same scenes as in condition one, but without the dynamic uh, property of condition one. And they can also explore the environment freely. Uh, this is because we are not focusing on interaction, which is another aspect is related to scenario two. Uh, so here, uh, all participants can interact uh, freely with the environment and can move freely within the environment. Um, in the passive control condition with low immersion, participants can read the, the traditional text-based version of the narrative without any immersive elements or tools. Um, a procedure can be to uh, allow participants to complete the pre-experiment survey assessing the, re the reading habits, preferences, emotional disposition and also state um, general affect state. Uh, participants then can be randomly assigned to one of the three experimental conditions. Um, of course, uh, participants uh, belonging to condition one and two have to be instructed about the technology and how to use the controllers. Um, all the participants have to be immersed in the virtual world for a specific period, for example, 20 minutes. Um, in the control condition, participants will read uh, for 20 minutes uh, the, the, the pieces of the book that have been selected. Throughout all the experience, in order to obtain um, a more, uh, let's say, more measure that is more dynamic um, of all the affective states perceived by um, participants during all the course of the experiment, um, we can measure participants' emotional responses with the physiological measures. After the experience, participants will have to complete a post-experiment questionnaire. So the measures can be uh, the emotional engagement. So um, a questionnaire related to emotional engagement is, uh, uh, is needed in this case since it's the main focus of, uh, uh, of the two research questions. Aesthetic emotions, so participants um, will, will be asked also to rate their aesthetic emotions, such as awe, oh, appreciation, beauty, and so on, uh, triggered the, uh, by the narrative. Of course, presence and immersion, flow state, and also physiological measures, for example, the galvanic skin response and the heart rate variability. Data analysis may comprehend uh, ANOVA and T-Test in order to compare the emotional engagement and the aesthetic emotions um, across uh, the participants that have been placed in the different conditions, so in the different immersion levels. Post-hoc analysis uh, will identify specific differences between the conditions. Here you can see uh, the references uh, above uh, the cytography and below the bibliography. Also, there is another slide of bibliography. Um, before finishing this presentation, I would like to thank you for your attention. I hope that this will create uh, uh, an interesting debate uh, about this topic. Um, and also, um, I can't wait to see you all uh, uh, in Monopoly in September, uh, because there I will present uh, the research questions uh, uh, related to all the other scenarios that in this presentation uh, have not been uh, proposed due to time limit. So thank you very much for your attention. For any doubts, question, or uh, anything, just write uh, at this email. Uh, and I hope to see you in Monopoly. <laughs>